Hello everyone, it's Bavar from PTC here with the third video in our Tavaran War series, this time focusing on the Second Tavaran War. Thankfully, after the First War's end, humanity had about 57 years of peace, which was plenty of time for wounds to heal, scars and memories to fade. But it wasn't to last. On the 15th of February 2603, a massive Tavaran fleet burst into the forest system from Banshee. Broadcasting on all frequencies, this fleet announced its intentions. To retake their home world, and humanity could either stand aside or die. Understandably, after the last war and the slaughter that was the Battle of Idris IV, there were those in Congress who were pushing for the concession of the planet, viewing the Tavaran's plight as a sympathetic one. This debate was cut short when the Imperator ordered an immediate attack. Corathal, the new Tavaran warlord, was previously unknown to the UEE, but turned out to be both charismatic and tactically gifted. Unifying the Tavaran diaspora, scattered after the First War, he made use of guerrilla tactics to move quietly through UEE systems where there were concentrations of their fleets and forces to attack them where they weren't. This basically left them forever chasing their own tail and unable to pin the Tavaran forces down for a decisive knockout blow a la the Battle of Idris IV. Naturally, over the past 57 years, he had also taken time to improve Tavaran tactics and technology through heavy trading with the various other alien species in the more remote systems. Having become complacent over the past half century in a smidge, humanity found it was very much on the back foot, basing its initial response and tactics on their near 60-year-old intel and experiences from when they last fought the Tavaran. This predictably resulted in heavy losses as the Tavaran had forced their way through system after system with their new approaches. Even when the UEE forces emerged victorious, they were often in such a poor state that they were unable to definitively push the Tavaran out of the systems that they were currently fighting in. Despite repeated attempts to force a decisive battle with their superior numbers, they found the Tavaran's use of dedicated shield ships in a Fairbanks formation was near impregnable. Brute firepower would not be the key to stopping them. In an effort to create a choke point, the UEE Navy pulled their forces back to the Centauri Elysium system jump point, assuming it would be Korothal's next goal. Realising the trap, the Tavaran forces split, attacking cities on Yar and Saisei. Suffering heavy civilian casualties, the Navy's hand was forced, and they had to shift the bulk of their forces to respond to these attacks. This left behind a small contingent, amongst which was a single carrier, the Countenance. This was to prove key later on, as was one of its squadrons in particular. This unit, Squadron 42, was a keel squadron. This is basically a unit that was meant to act as a disciplinary unit to straighten out unruly pilots, especially during a war when they couldn't be let go of or be left to rot in a brig, and were subsequently given missions that normal pilots were deemed too important to waste on. Whilst up till now their record was mostly without distinction, after the Battle of Centauri under the command of Captain Alexandra de Levy, they began to really shine and the squadron proper began to take shape. Over the course of their command, the captain had realised something. They couldn't run Squadron 42 like any old squadron due to the infighting and hot dogging. The problem wasn't the skill of the pilots, but rather their snap decision making and self-confidence which did not mesh with the traditional command structure. As an experiment, the captain merely told their pilots where the pickup was for an escort mission, rather than mandating a specific flight and mission plan. This resulted in the mission being completed hours ahead of schedule. In other words, the squadron could do anything you told them to, so long as you didn't tell them 
quite how to do it. With this in mind, all that had to be done now was to prove the unit's value to Admiral Fisher. It was clear to everyone that the planetary attacks were diversionary in nature, meant to pull the Navy, or at least the bulk of their forces, away from the jump point. As such, the countenance and other craft left behind to defend the point formed a firing wall in preparation for the inevitable Tavaran surge. Captain Dunlevy had seen this before and knew there'd be a lot of dead sailors by the end of the day. Whilst the firing wall would probably hold the Tavaran back for a time, maybe even long enough for reinforcements to arrive, the Tavaran shield wall tactic would mean they'd take minimal losses, thereby resulting in another stalemate. With the Tavaran effectively fighting one battle at a time in terms of losses taken to losses inflicted. A solution was needed and a solution was provided, although not necessarily one the captain or commander of the Countess was hoping for. Whilst tasked by command to hold the jump point, to do so was widely recognised as suicidal. Thus, they'd give up the jump point. When asked shortly before his death why he had yielded to the proposal, seemingly an insane one at the time, the commander replied, I was tired. Under the effects of a furious Tavaran attack, UEE forces seemed to melt away from the jump point, feigning significant damage and losses in general disarray under the barrage. Their goal finally in sight, the Tavaran fleet was ordered to proceed through the jump point. However, there was a catch. The jump point in question didn't have the capacity for the entire fleet at once. As such, they were forced to stretch their defensive formations out as they transited. As the first ship began to go through, Squadron 42 began their attack. The squadron had hidden their tallies in a powered down state amongst the wreckage of their fallen comrades waiting till they were surrounded by the transiting Tavaran ships. Their goal? Take out those blasted shield ships. With the Tavaran's defences stretched thin, the squadron was able to exploit their deployment of forces or their distribution. Whilst able to quickly scramble fighters to their credit, the damage was already done. In but a mere few moments, Squadron 42 had done what no one else had been able to do in seven years, pin the bastards down. The shield ships downed or damaged, the rest of the fleet could finally come in for the fatal blow. Though some Tavaran ships, including their flagship, were able to escape, their backs had effectively been broken. It's honestly hard to sum up the ending of this war better than the Tavaran commander's own words in two quotes. After the events of today, I know that either the Rajora has failed us, or we have failed the Rajora, and I'm honestly not sure if there's a difference anymore. But what I am sure of is that I will fulfill the promise that I made to myself and all of you. I'm going home. Those who wish to commit themselves to the land of our ancestors, follow me. Those who don't, use my advance as your chance to escape. May you live to fight another day. Gothraj Doa. With that said, the Tavarans surged toward the scars of their homeworld, not even firing back at the hastily cobbled together defences and naval ships that tried to engage them. Once in Khalith's atmosphere, and shrouded in the cleansing flames of re-entry, they turned off their shields and succumbed to their fate.